Now, he doesn't do interviews too much. So this is a very special night, okay? Everyone, <laughs> please help me welcome Prince Jackson to the mix. Prince, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. How are you tonight, my brother? Great. Thank you so much for that awesome intro. I feel like I'm Yeah, like, you know. But I, I'm doing fantastic. How's everybody? Doing good. good. It's great. It's bless, great. Bless. <laughs> We are just so happy to have you here tonight. And I just want to say, I don't think a lot of people realize because I just learned this today that your name is actually Michael Jackson Jr., but you go by Prince. So why do you choose not to go by Michael Jackson Jr.? So, it, I mean, it all started when I was born. I don't know how much time I got, but I was like, <laughs> <laughs> we here. <laughs> <laughs> Prince, but then when my brother was born, you know, a lot of people called him, my, he was called Blanket but that's not his actual <laughs> name on his birth certificate. So mm -hmm. his name is Prince Michael Joseph II, and my name wow. became Michael Joseph Jackson Jr. And wow. when I went to college at LMU, it just was like easier for me to say Mike instead of Prince, because I felt like it would attract a lot less attention, mm -hmm. um, okay. especially when the professor was calling out roll call or something, you know, so. Oh, God. I just switch it. It's one in the same. Um, I, sometimes Mike is nice for the uh, anonymity, but I also take a lot of pride in that because that's obviously my father's name, so I, I wear that. Yeah. It's a bad you know, I kind of. I kind of relate to you in that when I was in school, they'll be like Percy Miller and I'm down south and everybody knew my pops, Percy Miller. So that's how I came with the name Lil Romeo. I went with Lil <laughs> Romeo instead of Lil P because I was just known as Romeo. And it was that same situation where it just caused that extra attention that you don't need. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It can detract from your focus. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> okay. Can I just say that like for the entire day, I have been listening to Michael Jackson's music. I've been dancing to his music. You would think that I was Michael Jackson reborn, okay? Like he literally, his energy is all over my space right now. So I just had to say that I love him. I'm a huge fan. I'm so Thank thankful you. I appreciate that you took the time to like interview with us because I know you don't do many interviews. So we're really I grateful you for you guys that. having me on. And I would love to hear when people listen to my dad's music. It makes me feel good. Oh, um, yeah. the message vibe. You got to tell us, like, what was it like growing up in such an iconic family? Like, were you aware that your father was as famous as he was, like the most famous person in the world? Yeah. I don't know, Kat. A lot of people ask me this question, you know, and a lot. I think it comes off people are like, oh, it was an aha moment where it just kind of clicked and everybody was like, oh, my family's famous. Mm. But it's really more like, there was little seeds as I was growing up and getting older. And I saw, you know, that people would follow us around. People would just want to reach out and touch my dad. But it was really when I was like maybe around 10 or 11 in the Middle East, when I was watching a video of my father performing. And I don't remember the name of the tour. I believe it may have been the history tour, but he's performing outside. And you see this just sea of people and there's people fainting in the audience. And I was, I asked my dad, I'm like, you know, why are they fainting? I see you every day and I don't faint. Message, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the, the music and the way he performed. So that if there was an aha moment or a moment where it really clicked, it was that that I had that resonation that people really, you know, loved my father. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's yeah. crazy because obviously you love your father. Like he, you know, raised you. And so you're kind of like, dad, why are these people like feigning? Like you're just you know, a regular <laughs> guy in my mind, which I think is amazing. So, I mean, growing up with your father, like, how was that? And like, how close are you with your family now? Uh, well, I mean, I can, I can't say enough great things, obviously about the, the time that I spent with my father. Um, and then with my cousins, my grandmother, my other cousin, TJ, you know, it's just, I love the idea that I have such a big family and have such a big support group. Um, when I was living with my dad, you know, music is something that's kind of just present, obviously, within my family and just within the household. Um, it's something that echoes through the halls of the house. Either someone's singing or you can hear somebody doing a little beat. You know, <laughs> and that was with my father. That was with my cousins. Uh, and it got just kind of music just echoes through the house, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, can you just turn the music down for like two seconds? I'm trying to do some work. Like, please. No, no. I don't think oh, anybody yeah, no. Can't <laughs> <it enough>. <laughs> <laughs> so I just have to know, being that Michael Jackson was known for being a lover of all music and a pioneer in introducing new artists and genres to the forefront, what kind of music did you listen to growing up? 
Mm. Um, oh. Well, I mean, you hit it kind of right on the head. You know, he exposed us to all genres and really wanted to know yeah. the forefront. So we listened to mo- a lot of like the radio and the top 100s, top 10s, but also a lot of the classics like classical music, Mozart, Beethoven. Now, I can't tell the names of the songs, but like, you know, I enjoy a classic Adagio for strings, one of my dad's favorites. You know? um, so there really wasn't a genre that we didn't listen to. You know, it was he was an artist and he had an appreciation for his craft. And I think whether it was all genre, mm. opera to country and everything in between, there was this appreciation yeah. for that uh, work that goes into this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so did you and your siblings do what we did back in the day, what we all did, <laughs> and dance around to your dad's music, <laughs> music video? What I was doing today, all day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> today, yes. I, I mean, of course. I, I haven't actually met someone who has it, to be honest. Right. And it's just it's <laughs> always great to hear. But my favorite memory is I have one of uh, my my sister. And my brother was in the room, but it was my sister and I, and we were worked up about like saving the animals. And we did a protest in our bedroom, listening to They Don't Care About Us. We're like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just That's hey. awesome. <laughs> so most of your family are singers and musicians. Did you ever think of becoming an artist yourself? If I did, my family would be very honest and tell me that it's not for you. <laughs> oh, uh, I definitely, I don't have the, the voice for singing and I, it took me a while to learn what a beat was, but I <laughs> sat down at least. I just, I just can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. So you are telling us that you have never moonwalked or you cannot moonwalk? I tried it and I'm not gonna say I'm never gonna moonwalk. It was never like a big event, you know, but like I do need to work on my moonwalk. It's not worth so <laughs> I would the money I would pay to see you do that moonwalk. I feel like Michael would just give you that energy. He would just be like smiling down, passing it along to you. It's in your blood. It's do in it, your do it, right? I gotta get some practice in, you know, then I'll just surprise everybody with it. That's all let us know when you want to do that because we all be too yeah okay yeah no and i I love that um i gotta give you your you and your family your roses because your pops was a big influence your pops was one of the main reasons i made music i made history because of your pops uh my first single my baby i remixed um the jackson five and that's what i used to listen to as a kid and i still remember meeting your pops i performed for him at madison square garden right 9-11 9-11 happened the tragedy in New York and we was at Madison Square Garden and he literally like your pops listen to everything he knew my dad rap song my dad a gangster rapper from down <laughs> south and he was saying it like he was saying masterpiece songs to my dad and he even knew my music and it was just a moment where I knew like I could do this like you know Michael definitely gave me like that green light that anything's possible and you never know who you're inspiring I remember performing on that stage and he was singing my song with me. So um, you definitely, um, you come from a great, amazing man. And he definitely inspired me to be where I'm at today. But with that being said, you didn't get the music bug, but your sister Paris did. And you actually directed her video. How was that? Because I know my little sister's always like, I want to do a video and they have this sexy side. And I'm like, I didn't know about that. So Uh you found out anything, (laughs) I had any surprises directing your sister? Uh, so when we were putting together this project and it was one of her first, like, I guess, you know, songs that she wanted to come out with, it's, you know, it's difficult to be vulnerable with yourself. And I think when I first saw my sister sing, I knew this is what she needed to do. So I just wanted to help her out, make sure that I could be of assistance and, you know, take on that big brother, like protective role to make sure that I could just help it go along as smoothly as possible. And So Geronimo was actually the first song I ever heard her sing. And we thought that we were going to do a music video to that. It ended up being uh, glorious for your look. And when we were working together, I saw a side of my sister that I had never seen before, which was her professional work side. I was worried that she was late. She was going to be sleeping in. Because whenever I hang out with her as brother and sister, you know, yeah. it's very important. <laughs> but she showed up on time, you know, and she was very to the point. And she also, like my dad, she has a vision in how she wants things to play out. Mm. Um, and like for just with the music video that I did with her, she was very involved in the selection of her wardrobe and the color palette because it has to match her vibe, you know, and that really yeah. 
puts off a certain energy and she wanted to really be in control of that. And yeah. even her follow-up music video, the, uh, damn it, the name is forgetting me or leaving, yeah. but it was, uh, it, I loved the music video. I wasn't involved in yeah. it professionally. I got to see it made, but her idea behind it, when she first told me, I was, that's like very dark, you know what I mean? I don't see that coming by, but, or getting across properly. And when, yeah. when she showed it to me, like the first edit, I, I ate my words. It was beautiful. Yeah. You know, it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I've seen, oh, oh, I've, I've seen those music videos. Or I've seen one of your sister's music videos, and it was just yeah. Wow. But you know, super talented. Love right. pairs for it's real. Super talented. <laughs> but we're gonna bring it right back to you because I saw on your Instagram that you are super into motorcycles, which I think is so cool. I, I know. I've seen that. I'm Ooh, way whoa. too terrified to ride a motorcycle. Let me tell you, my balance is just not it. But I want to know where your passion for motorcycles came from. Uh, well, it's interesting because I, I feel like it's a culmination of factors. But I was told when I was younger, if I would be on a plane, I was crying. My dad would put me on the floor of the plane because mm. the engine would kind of like lull me to sleep. And then when I got mm. older and we would drive, the engine of the car would do the same thing. And then I learned to drive and I realized I could control it. <laughs> and then you learn to drive in LA. Who doesn't see bikes lane splitting? You got to deal with the traffic. Right. And then I learned how to drive stick yeah. shit and I realized I had even more control. And then I was like, motorcycling is next, you know? And <laughs> another thing is too, it, it does play a factor in it is I really love the Speed Demon music video. But, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's, obvi it's too obvious of a, a connection, but it's in the song when you hear the engine revving, I feel like that really invigorates your soul. You know what I mean? That makes you want to get out and go. I can't ride with that music because it's too aggressive, but like, <laughs> it is very, it is very exciting. <laughs> I could just imagine the wind in your hair listening to your music just by, <laughs> oh, I wish. I, I might have to teach me how to ride a motorcycle because that seems like so Get him to take you on a ride one day, James. The best. Period. Let's do it. I'm so down. <laughs> Okay, well, listen, while they talk about getting on a motorcycle, we got to take a quick, quick break. <laughs> but Prince Jackson, I mean, Mike, will be back with us oh. all about oh. his Heal LA initiative. So listen, don't go anywhere, okay? Because the vibes, they continue right here, man.